my name is Natalie. Today I want to do a book recommendations video which I feel like I haven't done in quite a while and specifically I want to talk about nonfiction books. So in the month of November there is a reading initiative hosted by a book olive and in previous years uh, Gemma from Nonfic Books uh, where basically you are um, encouraged to read nonfiction in the month of November uh, to read more nonfiction than you normally would uh, and for the nonfiction member as as a, uh, as a reading challenge they've also created some prompts and things to inspire you uh, in the kind of books that you might want to pick up uh, so I pr participated officially for the first time last year and had a lot of fun doing it um, and I also did two nonfiction book recommendations videos for uh, around this time last year so I will link both of those nonfiction book recommendation videos in the description in case you're interested. But today I wanted to do something slightly different. Uh, I wanted to recommend a few nonfiction books that I've read and really enjoyed based around the challenges for Nonfiction November 2018. Uh, so uh, hope hopefully you will find this um, interesting and helpful. As usual, the Nonfiction November challenges or prompts are based around uh, one word and in this particular uh, year they have created uh, or Olive have created um, word pairings but I am going to um, recommend at least one book for each word. So the first word is past time and for that I wanted to recommend um, two books. First is Unmentionable uh, which is a, a Victorian <laughs> Victorian history basically, sort of a general history of the things that you don't see in uh, the Victorian literature or in um, necessarily in period films or th things like that. It's the everyday living situation of the Victorian era and talks about things like hygiene and uh, gender roles, asylums, birth control and everything you can imagine that is sort of the interesting side to actually living through it. Um, and it's such a fun book. It's very entertaining and very comically written so it's very easy to read uh, and I think it would work it would be um, a nonfiction book that a lot of people would enjoy even if you don't normally read nonfiction uh, and also I feel like in general the Victorian era is a is a kind of era or part of history that a lot of people are interested in uh, even if they're not necessarily history buffs. Uh, the other one that I have for past time is Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon uh, which is a biography about Mary Shelley and Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, this is a, a dual biography of these two women who were mother and daughter. They never actually lived during the same time uh, and so the book is sort of making a point in that although they lived in different eras and and, and faced different societies, um, things had already changed quite a lot for uh, Mary Shelley uh, in the society that Mary Shelley lived in. They still faced a lot of similar challenges and uh, the reactions to those challenges were quite similar. So I thought this biography was really engaging, uh, very lively and colorful and I think that with biographies it's very easy to feel like it's uh, slightly overwhelming because it's an entire life um, but with both women they are so interesting so much happens in their lives that feel a uh, stranger than fiction. So this is a biography that I think is a standout and would highly recommend to everyone uh, but especially if you are interested in history or in women's history in particular. The next challenge is pastime and for that I've sort of focused on things like hobbies. Uh, the first one is Leap In, A Woman, Some Waves and the Will to Swim by Alexandra Hemingsley. This is a memoir about a woman who starts to uh, to learn how to swim or to relearn how to swim in a more proper sense. She starts taking swimming lessons and takes on bigger and bigger challenges, um, sort of changing the um, the places where she swims. She starts off in pools and then eventually uh, takes on the ocean and the sea. Um, and it's a very inspiring book. It's written in a very inspiring way. Um, but I also really liked how 
through her a sort of process of learning how to swim. She also talks about the feelings of failure along the way and sort of uh, pushing through those feelings of um, limitations within you, especially physical limitations, but just in general, pushing beyond them and enjoying the process of doing that and of strengthening yourself through um, through physical means or just mentally um, becoming more uh, resilient. The way that she looks at swimming and the history of swimming and all of the different elements that is part of the um, the activity is just um, very refreshing. I think that if you're interested in a book about uh, swimming specifically or just in general about sports and about physical activity and, and sort of the experiences of going through that and, and try sort of training your body, uh, I think that this is a, a fantastic book for that. The other book that I want to talk about is Grand Obsession by Perry Nisey or Nise. Uh, I always say nice for some reason, but this is a book about a woman who um, she falls in love with the instrument of the piano. Uh, so she sort of starts learning how to play the piano, but more than that, this book fo focuses on her um, trying to find the perfect instrument for her, so the perfect piano. Uh, and it's sort of a journey through uh, trying uh, a million <laughs> different um, pianos out and learning about the piano as an instrument. All of the different people that go into creating the perfect piano and the perfect sound out of the piano. And one of the things that the author has sort of has to face throughout the journey uh, that she chronicles is that there is no perfect sound or perfect instrument, that it's sort of an illusion and uh, all of the work that goes into creating that, um, that appearance of a perfection or the appearance of, of something effortless. Uh, so I thought that this book was uh, surprisingly interesting and has so many tidbits in it that I really enjoyed learning about and if you're at all interested in music, especially classical music, but just in general if you're interested in instruments and how they are created, uh, there's a lot of interesting points in this book. The next challenge is self and for that I sort of interpreted it as memoirs and specifically very intimate memoirs. First up I have Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. Uh, this is basically a memoir about Hope Jaren becoming a scientist, becoming interested in science in the first place, how it became her job, and it's also just about her personal life and all the things that are going on around her work uh, as a scientist. Uh, the thing that really strikes you when you're reading this, especially if you're listening to the audiobook, uh, is very apparent that this is very very intimate to the author and that uh, when you're listening to the audiobooks you, you can actually hear her tear up and choke up uh, when she talks about specific parts of her of her story of her life all of her uh, sort of uncertainties especially is very prominent in this book and I think that is um, one of the strengths to this to be able to do your work uh, to constantly have to prove its worth um, I think puts a lot of pressure on you uh, which obviously a lot of uh, all the jobs have some pressures and that is uh, being a researcher being a scientist has that kind of uh, pressure and she talks about that really um, in very vivid and uh, personal ways in this book uh, so if you're interested in uh, science uh, research in general and some of the actual lived experiences of having that as a main job uh, or if you're interested in nature science uh, or if you just want to read a very intimate memoir I think this is worth uh, keeping an eye on. The other one that I wanted to recommend is also slightly different um, and it is called Spinning by Tilly Walden. This is a graphic memoir um, about Tilly Walden's life uh, as a figure skater. A lot of the book is about specifically about her uh, time spent on figure skating but it's also about having her first crush, uh, figuring out her sexuality and just in general finding her her place in life and uh, coming to terms with herself. Uh, it's very uh, easy to read because of the, the form um, but it's also a very beautiful and very um, effective way of using art to tell a story and especially the emotional experience of Tilly Walden. Uh, I thought that the 
what this memoir does best is how creating the feeling of loneliness, the feeling of isolation from other people in the way that the light is used in the art and the way that um, sort of the, the spaces in the art um, are really uh, effectively done, uh, effectively used to create this feeling of being lost. While she is a figure skater and some of the things are specific to do with her um, figure skating, most of it is about uh, a coming of age story and, a, and, and one that a lot of people I think could relate to. Um, the feeling of confusion that comes with uh, that age, the transition from being a child to being uh, a teenager or uh, a young adult, uh, sort of making your own decisions and standing on your own two feet. This is one of the best graphic memoirs or even comics that I've read, um, where the art and the, the actual words um, are used together to create this unique reading experience. The next challenge is shelf, and for that I've sort of interpreted it as classics of the nonfiction genre. Uh, so basically uh, books that you would likely be able to find on a shelf. Uh, the book that I've decided to recommend for this challenge is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin, uh, which is basically two essays combined into this very slim volume. And both of these these essays deal with deal with race and ethnicity um, and racism, but it is also about religion and faith and um, identity and so many other things, and that is just packed into this very. Um, the, these very few pages. He has a very a beautiful way with words uh, and in capturing his own uh, experiences and the, the experiences of people around him. I think if you're looking for a short nonfiction book to read that really packs a punch and has a lot to offer and for you to really chew on, uh, this is definitely one that is worth picking up in my opinion. The next challenge is Wander and for that I have gone with Last Wilderness by Neil Ansel. This book is a memoir of the author um, walking through a, spe a specific part of Scotland or England um, and he, he goes to, he travels to the same spot several times and, and write, writes about his experiences and how um, how he sees the same environment in different ways uh, depending on when he is traveling but he's also sort of chronicling his own um, mental and physical experience of the landscapes because uh, he is losing his hearing he's already deaf in one ear I think and um, he's losing his hearing in the other ear so that is changing how he experiences the nature that he that is around him I think one of the things that this book does is talking about how we all experience nature in so different ways even though even if we are in the same space uh, even if we um, are moving around in the same landscapes you you really get the sense throughout this book that we see different things I liked how he talks about being alone as a thing that you choose uh, to step away from other people and what you notice when you um, have that isolation that comes from being alone and being surrounded by nature and and sort of being in silence which is another theme throughout the the, the reason I recommend this for the wanderer is because he's walking around and just observing the things that he is seeing around him and what that makes him feel. The next challenge is Wonder and I think that this book is probably the most perfect or any book that deals with this topic. It is An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Chris Hadfield. Obviously this is a book about an astronaut and it's partly about his work, um, what, what an astronaut does, how you become an astronaut and all of the things that goes into doing this uh, fantastic work. But it's also sort of general philosophy about life and about earth and about space exploration in general and the theme of space exploration I think is um, the thing that sort of came instantly to mind with wonder um, being sort of looking up at the sky realizing how small we are the, the sort of the infinite um, and uh, how much it exists outside of our own little bubbles and um, the thing that comes to mind for me is space and this is the only book I think that I've read on the topic uh, but it's very um, it's very engaging is very um, 
funny and light and uh, also philosophical and sort of uh, in a general sense things that a lot of people could relate to um, but also a lot of specifics with his work and I find uh, sort of learning about specific people's work is something that I really enjoy in nonfiction. So I would really recommend this if you are interested in space exploration or what it means to be an astronaut, what the job entails, uh, but just in general as well, a good nonfiction um, that is very engaging and funny as well. The audiobook is also really good of this. Next we have the micro challenge and for that I have decided to recommend Maestros and Their Music, The Art and Alchemy of Conducting by John Mossery. It is a book about conducting and being um, a musical conductor um, and the the micro being that is focused on a very niche kind of job and of in of an industry very few people become conductors and it's very difficult to become one and to become a successful one uh, john mossery talks about his personal um experience and journey to become a conductor and to uh, do specific um, musical performances um, but he talks more generally about conducting and some of the big conductors throughout history how conducting become became a practice uh, the historical uh, look on the topic and on the on the on the job and also how music is changing in terms of technology and things like that and how that is changing our experiences of music, um, the way that they play and they perform, how they record, everything is so linked um, and this book talks about a lot of general things that if you're at all interested in music I think would, you would enjoy but especially if you like classical music again. It's so invisible the work that they do it seems like they just wave their hands and um, obviously that isn't what they're doing and the, this book really highlights that how much hard work goes into becoming a conductor how unglamorous the, the life can be and how it's definitely um, a work of love uh, to do this job and to do it uh, successfully. As I said, if you're interested in classical music or in general you're interested in music history, uh, this is absolutely one I would recommend for a micro topic um, that you might not have read anything else about because there isn't uh, a lot of books about conducting I've checked because I really want to read more about it. And the last challenge is macro and for that I am recommending The Fall of Language in the Age of English by Minae Mizumura. This is a book about language and about the written word and of literature uh, in general. Some of the things in this book is about Japanese language and Japanese history specifically because that is the background that Mizumura is coming from. But throughout this book there is a general exploration of um, language and how it is connected with history and what is happening in history. Um, how the printing press changed things in literature and in language. How language changed changed when um, the, the written word became more and more prominent and how the, the sort of the state of things are changing when English is becoming more and more prominent, how um, smaller languages, local languages are losing their power or becoming extinct because they are no longer uh, necessary and what we lose uh, when those languages are lost. It's a very interesting book to read if you are interested in language but I think it's also a really fun book to read if you are interested in the history of literature and how it has changed over time and how much um, of how much literature is linked with the history of uh, speech and of, of, of language in general. The reason I wanted to recommend for the macro uh, was obviously because it is a very international or global topic, uh, language being something that affects us all. Uh, it's a book with a lot of food for thought which I think is one of the uh, reasons I really want to recommend this book to everyone. Those are all of the nonfiction books that I want to recommend for this uh, nonfiction book recommendations based on the prompts slash challenges. I've probably said challenges more than prompts but uh, you decide how you want to interpret the challenge slash prompt thing. Yeah, so if you read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts about them. If you have any recommendations for me based on the challenges, I would also love to hear that. And yeah, I hope you're having a really good day. I hope you enjoy this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.